Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. I've gotten two questions recently and from many people. First question is they're saying, Dave, am I in a safe place? Um, and really, I don't know. You have to determine that. You know, some people live in the city, they live in the country, suburbs, it doesn't matter. But I think one question you can ask yourself just to determine uh, if you're in the right place. Um, and a lot of people can't move, I understand that. But do you trust your neighbors? Right now, do you trust your neighbors? If you had to go on vacation, you had uh, something popped up uh, and you couldn't get a sitter for the dog and you couldn't take the dog with you, could you tell your neighbor, hey, can you come over and feed my dog? The dog might be outside in a, in a kennel or an area where they could feed it. Or maybe you got a cat inside and say, can you come over every other day and just check on the cat, give him food, give him water, check the litter box. Uh, here's the keys to my, my house. Um, I got neighbors I could trust, literally. I, I would have no problems giving the majority of them, that I, the ones I know, the key to my house. I know everything would be there when I get back and, and the animals would be taken care of. So if you don't know your neighbors, it's hard for to answer that question. You don't know your neighbors. So the point is get to know your neighbors. Now, if you realize your neighbors are a bunch of crackheads, druggies, alcoholics, untrustworthiness, uh, then you're probably not in the right place if SHT happens. If you can't trust them now, you're not going to be able to trust them later when they're hungry, when they're cold, when there's no money. Um, so you answer that question for yourself. You got neighbors you can trust. So you might have a few neighbors that you can trust. That's the first step. Your whole street might be, you know, some people might be good, some people might be bad, but at least you can trust your neighbors. So a lot of you can't move. I understand that. Uh, get to know your neighbors. You might realize, hey, that's a good person over there. Uh, you both, you know, don't talk to each other, but after you get to talk to them, maybe you got things in common. Develop those relationships. It doesn't have to be about prepping. So if that guy's into fishing, talk fishing. Maybe go fishing with him. Or that guy's into just target practicing, talk, you know, shooting. Um, you don't have to bring prepping into it at all. You develop a relationship first. I get that question all the time. Um, next question. And this one was recent. Why are you prepping? Why are you prepping so hard? Why are you like full speed ahead? So I literally jotted down a few notes. I literally just took a few minutes. So I probably could go back in the house for another 10 minutes and, and come up with 20 more. Let me show you why I am seriously prepping. And what I want you to do is if I don't cover something that you think is a reason why people should prep, put it in the comment section, please. Uh, this might help people in their conversations with other people. Uh, and they can say, oh yeah, this thing is a problem, this thing. And bring those up. Try to get that person to talk about the problem that exists um, and see if maybe the solution is not solving the world's problems or the U.S. problems because we're just individuals. If we can solve or uh, remedy the hardship that these problems are going to have on our families, get them to start to look at prepping. All right. Why do I prep and why am I prepping like crazy? First of all, U.S. debt. Uh, we're trying just to get the politicians uh, to agree on a debt limit. They can't even do that. Um, our current debt is $31,731,000,000. It's growing astronomically. At the current rate of spending, by 2027, we're going to be $42.7 trillion. So basically, we're going to go from $31 trillion the 42 trillion by 2027. Uh, this is not sustainable. Uh, this is creating huge problems. This is creating the inflation. This is creating problems in the world. Uh, they can see that we are uh, an empire that is dying. Um, that's why the dollar is being shunned. People are looking for an alternative to the US dollar. And when they find one, uh, the for us, the speed up to the uh, abyss will increase rapidly. The problem is they got to find a replacement for the U.S. dollar. Now, they might slowly de-dollarize, so we're hoping that, you know, next year it will just be a gradual lessening of the use for the dollar, not all of a sudden jump off the cliff. But the world has to have an alternative. Without an alternative, the dollar will just keep slowly dying. 
probably the Chinese yuan backed by gold, probably the BRICS nation getting together. Um, but when they can figure that out, there are so many other countries that want to join. Um, because first of all, if you deal with U.S. dollars and you do not go along with the current administration or any administration, basically, you can be sanctioned. So why are you going to deal with something that might get you in trouble? Next, border is wide open. This blows my mind. Uh, people are coming across the border. I have no problems with people coming to America, going through the paperwork. Absolutely not. That is the bedrock of this country. The opportunity for someone that is a good person, that wants to benefit them, benefit or uh, make their life better, to come to the United States. I truly believe in that. But we have to limit that. We have to have control of that. Um, we have to make sure that we can take care of Americans first before we bring other people in. Um, so yes, there should be a process, and there is a process, but the process has been thrown out. The border is wide open, and people are flooding across it. A lot of people that are flooding across it are military-aged men. I do not know where their loyalty lies, uh, but when you bring in millions and millions and millions of middle or uh, military-aged men, it could create a huge problem. So the border needs to be locked down. It should be so tight you can't even get a field mouse from one side to the other side. Uh, and that is possible. People that say, oh, you can't do that, climb over. If that is the agenda and that's what we want to accomplish, we as an American can put our heads together and shut that border off. I don't care if we have to build a wall and a sufficient wall and have whatever other means to keep people out. That needs to be done. That's why we're a sovereign country. We have clear, defined borders. People are coming from all over the world, walking across our borders. The bad thing is we're paying them. We're giving them assistance to get here. We're also, when they get here, we're giving them major amounts of assistance. The assistance that we don't have, assistance that we're not giving Americans. Uh, so the border needs to be shut. Let's look at banks. Uh, the amount of banks that are falling. Uh, just a few, but the amount of loss is unbelievable. More banks are going to continue to fall. Um, I don't know how many. But as we go along, we're going to see more heartache, more pain. And I pray we don't have a full-fledged bank run. We are, we are having a bank run. It's just a silent bank run. It's being done through computers. It's being done with you getting on your phone and transferring money around. Hopefully, we don't see the bank run where there's 100 people outside a bank lined up wanting their money. That day could come. And the government says, oh, no, don't worry. You're FDI or FDIC insured. The problem, they have this much money to take care of all of these deposits. So you can say, well, they'll just print money. And as soon as they go down that route, you're going to see inflation that we've never seen. Um, and this inflation is putting hardships on people. Um, people are suffering. Um, so if you're not suffering, say a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, keep prepping hard, but maybe try to see who you can help. Um, no manufacturing. Absolutely. The manufacturing base is destroyed. That was done on purpose, I truly believe. Um, so if we get into any conflict in the world, we're not even going to be able to produce what we need. It is a crime. Uh, people should be hung. Politicians should be taken to jail. Uh, past politicians, too, contributed to this problem. Major problem. No manufacturing. We were sold out. Let's look at commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is not doing that good. And you can throw in residential. A house in so many areas are so expensive. Young children or young kids just starting off cannot get into the market. So they have to rent. That means rent prices go up. Let's look at the green agenda. Uh, wanting to get away from even many states are trying to get away from having a gas stove or a gas furnace or a gas hot water heater. Um, they want you to go to electric. I don't understand that because electric is just as dirty as gas. That generator system somewhere that produces electricity is burning something. So getting away from it, going with solar and wind, I like solar and wind. You know, I, I want them to continue researching it. Um, and maybe we can use that in certain areas. But the bulk of it is nuclear and coal. 
and natural gas. Um, those things cannot be just shut off, but I am for doing, uh, looking at different things, because I have solar, I love solar. Solar for the small scale works great. Let's look at Ukraine. Uh, we're support, supporting a country uh, that we shouldn't be supporting. Now, I'm all for the people of Ukraine. I'm not for any of them than getting killed, that is for sure. Uh, but what's happening is billions of dollars in taxpayer money are going over there, getting sucked up, uh, used fraudulently, stolen, and there's no one uh, checking these things. Um, why are we paying Ukrainian uh, workers or pensions it blows my mind why we're guaranteeing these things. Uh, we have enough problems inside the United States. Let's look at the military side of the house. We cannot even recruit enough service members. One of the reasons are, is the woke agenda that's gotten into it. Uh, mind blowing. The military is destroyed. It is destroyed. If you've been in the military and if you have people that can tell you what's happening right now, it blows my mind of first the the amount of wokeness the amount of i call it sin and the standards that have collapsed we do not have people like we had the young men that stormed the beaches of normandy or fought the japanese island hopping we do not have that caliber of person um, we have become lazy, we've become fat, we've become, uh, no other words, except we are not the people that fought World War II. Definitely not. Remember, those people that fought World War II came out of the Great Depression. So they were hard already, they were tough, they knew what sacrifice meant. Let's also look at World War III. We are very close to a conflict can happen at any day uh, because we're pushing that agenda in Ukraine. Let's look at medical. Let's look at uh, what's happened to our medical industry since COVID. It's collapsing, it's falling apart. A lot of people in the medical field are leaving. We also had to put up with mandatory these and a lot of nurses and doctors left. Um, I can assure you, we're gonna get worse and that's just because of socialism. Look at crime, look at the shootings, uh, it, it's widespread. Let's look at race relationships, terrible. Um, and this woke agenda, uh, pushing things that in my mind is wrong, and I call it wrong, you can call it sin. Um, and the government is supporting things uh, that are truly, uh, wouldn't have been thought of 50 years ago. But now it's pushed on us every day. So this is reasons I prep and I'm prepping like crazy. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. So what other reasons should we put on this list? Um, why you should be speeding up your preps. Thanks for watching.